Alright guys, it looks like it's finally that time. I've done top strength videos in the past on the Sam Raimi Spider-Man and the Marvel Cinematic Universe Spider-Man. By the way, you should check out those videos if you haven't already. Links are on screen and in the description. And today I'm finally going to be finishing off the trilogy and answering the question you've all been asking. How strong is the Amazing Spider-Man? And this is honestly a great question because seriously the guy is ridiculously strong. I mean we've seen him hold back the Lizard who at that time was able to casually toss and tear holes in cars, swing around manhole covers, and poke holes in his own webbing. Stuff that Oscorp claimed was 10 times stronger than steel and could pull jets around. But just how strong was he though? Well let's take a look and find out. Like always let's start off with a solid base feat. Back in the first Amazing Spider-Man movie Peter catches and tosses a football seriously denting a goalpost in the process. Seriously how did nobody think that was weird. Now, goalposts are usually made out of a variety of materials, but the uprights, the part of the goalpost Peter bent, are typically made out of aluminum. Pure aluminum has a tensile strength of up to 11 megapascals, or about 1,595 psi, while some aluminum alloys have tensile strengths of up to 600 megapascals, or about 87,022 psi. Now, I don't know the exact type of aluminum used to make high school football goalposts, but even if we lowball this feat and say those posts are made out of pure aluminum, that's still double the strength of concrete. Remember how I said in my Raimiverse Spider-Man top strength video that the force needed to break concrete was like getting punched by former pro boxer Michael Spinks? Well this is like getting punched by two copies of that guy at the same time. Crazy right? You know what's even crazier though? That football didn't even pop. Damn how strong is that football? Next video confirmed. Anyway if you want to base feet with the usual pounds and kilogram measurements then let's go back a little bit in the same movie when we see Peter grieving over Uncle Ben's death before lifting Flash off the ground and slamming him into the lockers. Like every other time I've used a person's weight as a measurement for strength I'm not going to try to guess how much the actor weighed in this scene because that makes no sense. But we can use the national average for 18 year olds as a good basis. I'm going with 18 since all these characters are graduating high school in the next movie and I just can't see these guys as being 16. They look too old for that. And since we're going with 18 then the average weight of a male teenager at that age in the US is 147.5 pounds or about 66.9 kilograms. We could also use the average weight for full grown men in the US too since we also see Peter casually picking up regular adult thugs from time to time. And in that case the average weight for males in the US is 194 4.7 pounds or about 88 kilograms. There's also a couple times in both movies where he's casually flipping and swinging around manhole covers. Now manhole covers can be made out of a couple different materials it makes their weight vary but according to the official sewer design standards document for New York City from back in 2007 their manhole covers are typically made out of cast iron all of which vary in weight depending on the size of the cover. The 24 inch diameter cover has a minimum weight of 130 pounds or about 58 kilograms but the 36 inch diameter cover can actually weigh even more with a minimum weight of of 400 pounds or about 181 kilograms. We even see Peter save two random civilians from the Rhino after he crashed into a bus in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. But how much force did he have to exert in order to stop the bus? In order to find that out we need to figure out the deceleration rate of the bus and before we can find that out we need to know how fast the bus was moving after impact. So let's use the formula V equals D over T where V equals velocity, D equals the distance the bus traveled, and T equals the time it moved that distance. Considering that the entire scene of the crash is both in slow motion and include shots from Gwen's speech at Midtown High's graduation ceremony, let's just assume the entire scene, from the crash to when Spidey's able to bring the bus to a complete stop, lasts only 5 seconds. As for the distance, well, from the overhead shot, it looks like the bus might be about 1 to 2 meters from the parked car the civilians are kind of standing in front of. Just to keep everything simple, let's just assume that the bus traveled 1 meter. Adding our numbers into the formula, we get this. In total, this means the bus has a travel speed of 0.2 meters per second. Now that we know that, we can plug our numbers into the formula for deceleration. A equals V minus U divided by T, where A equals the deceleration rate, V equals the final velocity, U equals the initial velocity, and T equals the time it takes for the bus to come to a complete stop. For V, we can just use zero since, you know, that's kind of obvious. For U, we can use the travel speed we just found a second ago, 0.2 meters per second. And for T, since the part of the scene where Spidey actually puts his feet on the ground and stops the bus occurs in real time, we can actually count how long it took for him to bring the bus to a complete stop. I counted that it took two seconds, so we're going to use that. Plugging in all those numbers, numbers we get this. And after doing some math we find that the deceleration rate of the bus is 0.1 meters per second squared. Now we can take that number and plug it into the formula for force. Force equals mass times acceleration. The bus used in the scene is a 1995 Nova bus with a gross vehicle weight or maximum operating weight of a vehicle with the passengers, driver, and everything a car is carrying and needs to run of 37,000 pounds or about 16,782 kilograms. Multiplying 16,782 kilograms by 0.1 meters per second squared tells us that 
Spidey was putting out 1,678.2 newtons, or about 377 pounds of force, while stopping the bus. Skipping over to the middle of the movie, we see during the first fight between Spider-Man and Electro that Spidey was able to rip a fire hydrant out of the ground one-handed and use it as a weapon. Now we already established that concrete has an ultimate tensile strength of 5 megapascals, or 700 psi, which makes it even more impressive that Spidey was able to destroy that so casually, and with one hand. But how much does the fire hydrant weigh? Well, that varies. As of 2014, modern hydrants can weigh 500 pounds bare minimum, or about 226 kilograms. However, older ones in New York City from up until 1930 can actually weigh up to 800 pounds, or about 362 kilograms. But since I don't know how old that specific fire hydrant is, let's just lowball this feat and assume it's a more modern hydrant. Funny enough, it turns out Peter actually put out more effort back in the first Amazing Spider-Man, when he shatters the backboard at his high school gym. Another thing nobody seemed to think was all that weird, huh? See, during the scene when he dunks on Flash, his dunk was so powerful it actually caused the backboard to shatter. The reason why is in the design of the backboard. You see, the rim is built directly onto the glass. Every time a shot or a dunk happens, the force from that action is transferred directly into the glass. You put too much force on it, and it shatters. So, how much force was Peter exerting in order to break the glass? Well, thankfully, we don't actually have to figure that out because the show Sports Science already did. On one of their episodes, they found that backboards with the rim built onto the glass take about 2,780 newtons, or about 625 pounds of force to shatter. Moving back up to The Amazing Spider-Man 2, we see that Spidey was able to casually catch a fast-falling police car before it landed on a cop. Now, to me at least, the car looks like a 2004 Ford Crown Victoria. I could be wrong, I don't really know cars, sue me. And if it is, then that means this car has a curb weight, or the weight of a car without anyone or anything in it, of up to 3,964 pounds, or about 1,798 kilograms. But he's actually been shown lifting heavier cars than that. In the first movie, Peter easily catches a few different cars with his webbing after they were tossed over the Williamsburg Bridge by the Lizard. Now, according to the internet movie car database, two of those tossed cars included a 2009 Dodge Challenger, a car with a curb weight of up to 4,140 pounds, or about 1,877 kilograms, and a 2011 Chrysler Town & Country, a car with a curb weight of 4,652 pounds, or about 2,110 kilograms. He even ends up holding the Chrysler one-handed while rescuing that one kid, but he sounds like he's having a little bit of difficulty doing it. That's it, buddy, that's it. Okay, now climb. Come on, Jack! But what's even more impressive for me is that when the camera pulls back, we see that he was able to catch six cars in total, all probably with the same level of difficulty. That's probably more of a combo strength and speed feat, depending on how fast the lizard was chucking those cars, but still, that is seriously impressive. But wait, that's actually not his maximum output. We actually saw his top strength level early on in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. We even saw it earlier in this video, actually. Remember when we calculated the force needed for him to stop that bus from crashing into those two people? Take a look at that scene again. You'll notice that the bus almost tips over from the impact, but Spidey is able to not only keep it from tipping, but also put it right back on its wheels. That is insane. Remember, this bus weighs 37,000 pounds, or about 16,782 kilograms. That means this version of Spider-Man has been shown to be able to move up to 18.5 tons. It's still a pretty far cry from how strong the MCU Spider-Man is, but still. Who figured Garfield Spidey was going to be so tough? Alright guys, that's how strong the Amazing Spider-Man really is. If you agreed with any of my calculations, or even if you didn't, or maybe you want to point out a feat I didn't in this video, Video, then go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Big thanks to everybody who requested this video. Don't forget to keep leaving me suggestions for future videos. All right, I will see you guys next time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to click that like button, maybe leave me a comment while you're at it, and go ahead and click that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to check out any of my social media pages. I've got a Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram. All those links are going to be in the description below. And I've also got my last video right there in the middle of your screen. So if you want to check that out, go ahead and click it. Check it out. All right, and I will see you all next time.